Hi everyone, this is Pam Coey. I'm going to be working on canvas today. It's a uh, staple to my wall and I actually, um, it's linen and I put two coats of acrylic gesso on it. So it's kind of rough right now. That's because it's so absorbent. And then I just taped off the edges um, because I'm going to try and uh, most likely stretch it after it's all done. So I thought I would get started here. A lot of this content will be in the Watch, Learn, Grow library as I proceed through the middle and the end stages. But um, in this very first part, it's play. And so I like to share that with everybody. So um, here we go. I'm going to start out with a really nice bright yellow just as an underpainting. Kind of um, dilute that out just a little bit with my acrylic airbrush medium instead of water. And it's a nice long handled brush. I haven't really um, decided on my palette yet. I'm just going to kind of wing it and see what I feel like. I haven't added any, any marks yet either, but I kind of want to just get some of this white covered. I'm not sure I'm going to cover all of it. I just want to get kind of the central shape going. gigantic paint scraper here. get some thicker paint on there and the orange and the yellow are going to mix however they want to so if there's light pressure where there's almost no paint at all or I can press harder Just getting rid of that white is kind of nice right now. I might leave little parts of white, but I don't know how much. Just a little. It's also kind of a nice mark making tool there. But I can also just kind of drag it down like this. Some interesting shapes. It's all this is all pretty much wet into wet. So, um, but here I like that shape. So that might actually be a mono print. Let's try this. If I barely touch it, I get marks like this which is kind of different. Um, can certainly transfer that elsewhere. If I press harder, then 
you know, it picks up more paint when you get like this. So change directions. So this is the color I'm mixing. Doesn't look like much. It's just a yellowish gray and it has some cadmium red in it so I wouldn't really say that it's going very orange. I just want something that's not gonna, um, yeah the value is fine. trying to get a feel for the texture of the canvas and see how the paint glides. It's not sinking in anymore because I've got that yellow paint down but originally the uh, gesso was very, uh, it was really absorbing the paint. I noticed that right away. It was like a sponge so I really had to have a lot of that yellow paint. Once you get the uh, Gesso covered up though, it's not quite as um, much like a sponge anymore. This is an acrylic um, 15 millimeter water based. I'm trying to find the brand here. I think these are Montana markers, but, anyways, um, you can refill these and they're just markers. So, I'm going to just try it. This is black. So it's just out of curiosity. Let's see how this goes. There's just so much space here and so much area to cover. So I kind of just want to get something going. slow down to get the right edge that you want. But these are nice. I like these. It's the first time I've used these. <laughs> um, still a little bit wet here so I'm going to stay away from that. using the edge. It's got like this chisel. I love to use this uh, long painter's guide. This is the extra long one. It's like two feet long. Um, you can find these at any hardware store. And I've just seen that I it's not even long enough. So um, here's this really gigantic uh, yardstick. It's six feet long. I use this a lot for large scale work. Again, your tools have to really scale up when you work on this size. And this isn't even that large.
I'm really not liking anything that's happening here, but that's normal. I'm still in the play stage and having really fun, a lot of fun. Um, so what am I going to do now? Um, what I have is pretty much mid-tone. I've got some really nice darks. I have just a little bit of white left here. I did that kind of intentionally. This is a piece of um, paint transfer. I stuck this on yesterday. Let's see if I can get it off. I was just really experimenting to see how well that would transfer because um, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but this is a very nice rectangular shape and um, I like that and again that was a paint transfer so if you haven't taken my acrylic technique course that's how I show you how to do that um, but I like that I like the fact that I can get a really nice shape and I cut it out of this um, this is this was the paint transfer sheet this was parchment paper paint and I just cut out the shape you know out of here okay this is just all pretty free form. I'm trying to get some significantly thicker paint on here just to see if I can, how, how much paint I have to get on here to get away from this highly textured, you know, it's a woven fabric, this canvas. So how much paint do I have to get on here before I don't really feel that texture anymore? Just out of curiosity, because I not sure how much I like that, but I think part of it is just getting used to it. What size is the brush? This is a number 12 and it's called a filbert. I like using filberts. They have kind of a rounded top. So they don't have a flat top and they're not a round. So they just, um, they seem to hold a lot of paint. That's what I like. So I've kind of started to make a circle here. And it's kind of starting to drip down here, which I kind of like. But I'm going to just kind of keep going here. I'm not going to try and make just circles. Even with a filbert brush, you can make a corner. It should be easier with a flat brush, but you can do it, you know, if you know what you want, just the way that you handle the brush. I made these little dots, so I'm going to kind of Bring them out a little bit. Not, not all of them. I think just those. And make some marks here. I'm trying to vary the kinds of lines. Thick and thin. This looks very gray. Looks like a greenish gray in the container, but then with um, the backdrop being kind of orange, it does, the, the gray kind of goes, it takes on a bluish hue, which is called simultaneous contrast, um, meaning that a color, any color, is influenced by what's around it. So if there's a lot of orange and warm, um, a gray is going to take on that complement, sort of look like the complement, which is so fascinating. <laughs> So it makes color very tricky, but very interesting too. Notice how these don't show up very well because they are so close in value to what's behind it. Very low contrast. So these are low contrast. This is high contrast between black and yellow. This is in the, in the middle. So the more you can see it, the higher the contrast it is. And then the less you can see it, the lower the contrast it is. Okay, I've used about all of that. And here's a thin line over a thicker line. 
Here's a rectilinear shape because there's so many curvilinear shapes. I think the next thing I'll do on it is a glaze, but I'm going to let this dry overnight because I don't want to rush it. And uh, so I guess that's the end of today on this painting. <laughs>